Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. <clears throat> it's been a while. I've been a busy bee, started a new job and um, uh, well I'm just very busy. Um, but anyway, back to today's video. So what are we looking at? We're going to be looking at the mighty Mini MIG. I was going to say Mini Amiga. Uh, the Mini MIG, which does mean Mini Amiga. Um, now I've been very generously sent this board by Mr. David Pleasance who has asked me to do a little review of it, have a little play with it, and um, and then I have to give it back, which is a shame, but there you go. So for those of you who don't know what the Minimig is, what is it? Well, it is an open source um, implementation of the Amiga 500, uh, or Amiga 500 Plus, really. It, um, it has all the uh, chipset on an FPGA chip, um, which is a field a programmable gate array, as I recall, and it is um, it is a full, a fully working Amiga 500 or 500 plus, depending on whether you use OCS or the ECS chipset. There is no AGA. This is purely an Amiga 500. I don't want to say emulator because that is disingenuous to say emulator. It uses a Spartan. Uh, FPGA and a Freescale or Motorola uh, 68000 or a 68 68SEC triple zero, which um, I think is a much more modern version of the Motorola 68000, which means it can be overclocked. Uh, and I believe this board can go up to or around 50 megahertz which is laughable by today's standards, but back in 1985, this would have been a dream come true. It is a hardware implementation of the Amiga 500, which outputs to VGA. Uh, so it takes the 15 kilohertz signal and sends it up to modern VGA spec, which is uh, whatever it is, 32. Um, it gives you two megabyte of chip RAM and set the RAM to uh, slow RAM or I'm not sure if you can select any fast RAM. I'll have to have a look at that. Uh, but you can select slow RAM. You can have, uh, you know, one megabyte or 512K or whatever it is. The best that the Amiga 500 ever achieved was the Amiga 500 Plus with two meg chip. Uh, well, that was it really. But you do have the benefit of being able to select slow RAM. So if you have games that are particularly irksome and require slow RAM, then you can configure it to do that, which is uh, particularly good. Uh, if you look at the board, we have uh, an RS-323 serial port for communications. We have two joysticks, um, DE9s, which are Atari or Quickshot, whatever you want to call them. We have a VGA port, which is PAL. I'm not sure if you can select NTSC, but it is PAL. Uh, an MMC memory card slot, which is running uh, workbench, 3.5 mil audio, and a 5 volt DC jack for power. Uh, oh, it can run NTSC. I'm just looking at some information. So we have hardware OCS and ECS in PAL and NTSC, which is switchable. And we have 512k SRAM for Kickstart ROM. And we have a 1500 kilobyte of slow RAM. We have 512 to 2048 kilobyte uh, chip RAM. So there we go. So that is uh, all the ranges of the Amigas as they were made back in the olden days, or the 500s anyway. Now this, I believe this is uh, it's a multi-layer PCB. So it's not your usual cheap and nasty Chinese board. This is a very expensive PCB to make. This is a complicated PCB to make. Um, it contains a whacking great FPGA. I don't know what the current cost of an FPGA is, but they're not cheap. It has an ARM controller built in, uh, an MCU, which um, I think on the original Mini MiGs, I didn't mean I had one of these years and years ago, and it uh, you needed the ARM plug-in board to give you whatever it gave you, which I think was more memory. But anyway, this comes with a built-in arm controller uh, but the one big feature that version 9.1 brings to the table is its ability 
for the first time uh, to use external memory and uh, CPU accelerators. So you can unplug the 68000 chip from the socket and you can pop in a vampire or a terrible fire card or if you're so lucky a Pi Storm uh, Amiga 500 card. Obviously not a 1200 one as it won't fit. I believe this is only for version 1.9. 1.8 will not let you do it. So what else can it do? Well in a nutshell that's it. Uh, it uses a PS2 keyboard for input and a PS2 mouse. Uh, a normal VGA out to go to your monitor, your flat screen or whatever it is you plug it into. There is no, as far as I'm aware, composite or anything like that. It is a purely digital signal, so it's VGA. And two game ports. What else do you need? Um, that's it, really. There's a lot going on on the board. You can see it's quite a busy board. We have voltage regulation on the bottom left. We have the SD card in the center bottom. The Motorola 68000 is on the middle to top right. FPGA in the middle, RAM middle left, and then ports all along the top. The board itself boots very quickly, and you are straight into Mega Workbench. In oh, I say it's probably comparable to a very fast Amiga, um, not as fast as a, a Pi Storm or Vampire, obviously, but it's running at whatever an Amiga 500 ran at, so you're not going to get lightning fast reflexes from this thing. But it does seem to work, from what I can tell, super stable. It is nice to use. It is extremely well made and um, beautifully designed. It is uh, it's very clean design and it looks nice to use. So that, in a nutshell, is the Mini MiG. So I suppose what I should do really is connect this thing to uh, video capture and uh, video some games. Now what I could do with is a list of programs. I'm going to go away and, and search for some programs that didn't play well with the Minimig and see what I can find. It's been 10 years or more since I had my Minimig and I just cannot remember. So coming up in part 2 I'm going to be showing uh, a stream of, uh, of games running along and we're going to try and find a few problems, see if there's any bugs. I'm sure there won't be. This thing's been uh, in production now for many years, many, many years. It was, let me see if I can find out when it was first started. It's quite, quite a long time ago. Uh, the original MIG, the original Minimig prototype is based on the Spartan 3 starter kit and the chipset is synthesized, nice, via FPGA. Um, and the first board used a 3.3 volt Motorola 68000. So the Minimig is a re-implementation of the MiG-500 by Dennis van Wuveren uh, of the Hobby Commodore Club in Netherlands. At the time of writing, the hardware is not available for public use. I think it is now. I believe it's open source now, so it is. Hence why it's on the Mister. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to have a little play with Workbench. I'm going to probably point the camera at the, the, the LCD monitor, which will be rubbish. Uh, but this is purely just to show it working and I'm going to do a part two video where we're going to see the Minimig running, playing software demos and various other things. So I'm just going to let the video run now for a little bit as I play and faff about. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now. Thank you.